I'm a faculty <coughs> member in the Department of History and Philosophy of Science at the University of Melbourne. Uh, the department at my university was established in 1946. It's the second oldest history and philosophy of science uh, department in the world. I've been there now uh, for a little over 10 years and I've attended a lot of seminars uh, and a lot of lectures uh, given by my colleagues uh, who are specialists in the history and philosophy of science. So I have that background knowledge. However, my main field of research is in technology, uh, philosophical aspects of technology, but also sociological aspects of technology. So the history and philosophy of science, or the history of science as such, and the philosophy of science as such, is not my key research area. So my remarks to you in the course of this lecture will not be as sophisticated as the cutting edge specialists might provide. However, I'm hoping that it will offer you an introduction to the field which will be uh, cogent and comprehensible and will give you some sort of foundation uh, should you wish to pursue this field um, further which, of course, uh, I hope that you do. Now, the question that you uh, may well ask is, what has philosophy got to do with science in the history and philosophy of science, and what has uh, science got to do with philosophy? After all, why should not scientists simply go about their job in their biology laboratories or in their computer laboratories or uh, in their astronomical laboratories and leave the philosophers to themselves. Why would a, why would a scientist, be a practising scientist, engaged with their test tubes and their microscopes and their computer code, why would they be interested in anything that a philosopher might have to say? It's a legitimate question. Similarly, why would a philosopher who is interested in the difference between good and evil, interested in how to lead the good life, interested in ethics, why would they be interested in what somebody is doing with test tubes down the corridor or what somebody is doing looking through a telescope uh, down the corridor? These are, these are legitimate questions. And the, the, the truthful answer in my experience at universities is that a lot of the time they don't have anything to do with each other. The scientists do simply get on with their test tubes and their microscopes and the philosophers do get on with their arguments about the good life, etc. And they do not have the sort of interaction that I think would be valuable and many others of course think would be valuable um, for them to have. But that having been said, there are a lot of questions that are very profound for science.